Hello everybody, Grandma D here. Welcome back to my channel. I am pretty happy because the time has finally arrived that we are going to read a wonderful new book that I picked up, The Legend of the Petoskey Stone. Now this is a Michigan-based story about the Petoskey Stone and a legend surrounding how it got its name. And it is near Petoskey, Michigan, which is about an hour from where I live. So I'm pretty excited to be able to bring you this story because it touches home a little bit for me. And I hope that you will enjoy this book as much as I'm enjoying reading it to you. So let's get all settled in. I hope you have a snack and maybe a drink, your favorite drink um, and your favorite blanket and pillow so that we can get started and read this beautiful story together. So now without further ado, we are going to, head, going to go ahead and get started reading The Legend of the Petoskey Stone by Kathy Jo Worgan. Look at there, there's a map in the front of the book. There's uh, Traverse Bay, there's Bayview. Those are all areas that I'm familiar with, the city of Petoskey. Those are all areas that I've been to many times. Look at that. This book belonged to someone else. I purchased it as a used book. Isn't that cool? That's a Petoskey stone. Super cool. A father and his son were walking along the beach, searching for Petoskey stones. They looked through the rocks that had washed up near the water's edge. They sifted through sand and pulled stones from the shallows of Lake Michigan. The father was watching the water roll towards the shore when all of a sudden a wave splashed at his feet. It was then he spotted the wet gray stone. It was round and smooth and had a beautiful sunburst pattern on it. As he plucked it from the sand, he asked his son, has anyone ever told you the story about the Petoskey stone? Have you ever walked on the beach, collected stones or shells? If you have pictures, I would love to see them. Long ago in 1787, an Ottawa princess and her husband were leaving their winter home. He was a French fur trader who had been welcomed into the, her tribe and an honorary chief and he had worked through the winter collecting furs in an area we now call Chicago. But when spring arrived, it was time for them to travel back to their summer hunting grounds along the shores of northern Lake Michigan. Look at that canoe and the princess in the front. That's her husband, the honorary chief. They're getting ready to head to Michigan. The family traveled day after day, but the journey was slow and hard because the princess was ready to give birth. One night, as they neared the mouth of the Kalamazoo River, she could not travel any further. The family made a shelter, and while the princess remained behind the deerskin door of the hut, her husband waited outside listening to the night sounds and admiring the stars in the sky. The princess began to give birth to the baby as the chief waited nearby. Hours passed and the stars dimmed. The moon began to fade and the night animals became quiet. But then as it became almost silent, 
the moments before the sun was ready to rise. The joyous cry of a newborn child filled the woods and echoed over the water. Wow, wow, beautiful. The chief held the baby in his hands, feeling deep and instant love. At that moment, the sun rose, casting ribbons of beautiful light through the trees. As sunshine fell softly upon the baby's face and the father said, he shall be called Patozge, and he shall be an important man. He named him Patozge because the word meant the rays of the rising sun or sunbeams of promise. He knew this was a good name because it meant there was always the promise of a new day. It's a new baby and the sun shining down upon him. How wonderful. As his father adored him, Patozge was bathed in the most beautiful morning light and it seemed as if nearby lakes, rivers, and forests whispered his name in approval. Isn't he sweet? Ah, the start of a new life. Not long after that, the family reached their village in the North Woods, where the baby known as Patozge grew into a young man. He loved to play in the lake and could easily catch the biggest fish. Look at that. He's fishing with a spear. Have you ever fished with a spear? There's a seagull. Probably trying to see if he can catch a bite. <laughs> Patozge also liked to hunt for food. He would walk quietly through the woods and always when he found his game, he was thankful and useful with it, which is very important. It's very important not to be wasteful. And when the snow arrived, Patozge went in search of animals for their fur. Furs would keep his family warm or be traded for goods. He set traps and snares in the forest and grew better at the challenge every year. As Patozge grew to manhood, he became such a skillful hunter that one year he killed 40 bears and sold their hides for a very good price. Wow, he's got a rabbit. See that? Interesting. Over time, Patozge became a fur trader, like his father had been. He traveled by water to Indian villages collecting furs. He piled his birch bark canoe high with pelts and raised a sail made from an old blanket. As it gathered breeze and pushed him along, he sailed through an inland waterway to the east side of Michigan. From there, he pushed on to Mackinac Island, where he would trade them for he where he would trade them for goods. Mackinac Island. I bet you all know Mackinac Island. Things have changed a lot since the days of Potosque. Potosque loved his homeland along the shores of northern Michigan. It seemed as if all of nature belonged to him and that he had a special place along the bay. What a lovely photo. What a beautiful lake and the birch trees. Eventually, Patozge married and became a father. 
He now was a headman, which meant he was third in line in his tribe. This was a place of honor, one that he earned through his intelligence and fairness. Over the years, Potosge was such a successful trader, hunter, and farmer that he was able to purchase land near a beautiful river that danced like a ribbon through the forest and flowed right into the big lake. It was known as the place where bears walked beside the flowing waters, and Potosge liked it very much. There's a bear. There he is with his family. That must be Lake Michigan. Did you know if you stand at the Mackinac Bridge on the lower Michigan side facing north and the bridge is ahead of you, Lake Huron is on your right Lake Michigan is on your left. The Mackinac Bridge is a dividing line between those two lakes. Did you know that? So Potosge built a wooden home there at the edge of the lake, settling on the shore where the sand rippled in waves along small gray stones. But things were beginning to change. There's his house and his canoe. What do you think he means by that? Things are beginning to change. Hmm, maybe we'll find out. A town was beginning to grow in the area near Potosge's home. Pioneers came from the east to build homes deep in the woods. Farmers came to plow long stretches of grass into farms. Businesses, business people came to build lumber mills and stores. One man, Hiram O. Rose, came to set up a general store and other businesses. He quickly became friends with Potosge and began to call him Chief Potosge as a sign of respect. Because most people knew Potosge and liked him very much, it wasn't long before the whole town began to call him Chief as a sign of admiration. Wow, see the town growing in the background? Mm. But the growing area needed an official name. So one night, several people gathered to choose just the right one. It didn't take long for everyone to agree that it should be named Petoskey, after Chief Petoske. True to the words of his father spoke at the moment he was born, Chief Petoske was becoming an important man by lending his name to the town he loved. And in return, Potosge was loved by all. Wow, very interesting. It wasn't long before people from other places wanted to visit the town named after Potosge. Some came by steamship, while others came by train. They came to enjoy the beautiful lake and to breathe the fresh air. But they also came to walk along the shore and search for a special stone that appeared to hold the rays of the rising sun inside. Because the stones seemed to be found everywhere near Petoskey, they soon earned the name Petoskey Stones. Those two women are looking for Petoskey stones, I would bet. Have you ever swam in Lake Michigan or Lake Huron? The father shifted the stone from one hand to the other, admiring the sunbursts 
made so long ago. When I find a Petoskey stone, he told his son, I know that I hold the spirit of Petoske in my hand. I carry the promise of tomorrow, which means I will have one more day in the place I love best with the person I love most. Look at all the stones they have on the ground there that they're looking at. I love hunting stones and shells. It's a, such an adventure. With that, the father placed the Petoskey stone into his son's hand and whispered, that place is here and that person is you. The little boy held the stone as tightly as he could and looked into his father with love. And just then, as the sunshine fell upon them, it seemed as if all the nearby lakes, rivers, and forests whispered Potosuke's name once again. The little boy looks so happy. Today, when people search for Petoskey stones, they hope to find the rays of the rising sun. And when they do, they carry sunbeams of promise, the face of Petosuke, who was showered with the rays of the shining sun from the moment he was born. Each stone is a reminder of the man who gave his name to the land he loved and to the beloved stone that offers the promise of a shining new tomorrow for everyone. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. The end. And if you get this book for yourself, in the back of the book, it talks about how to polish a Petoskey stone. That would be cool. And in the front of the book is a little story about the legend of the Petoskey stone. What a wonderful and super interesting story. The first time I read this, I thought, oh, the kids are going to love this. And I have to say, there is nothing like a book. There's nothing like how it feels, how it looks, the pictures inside, turning the pages and watching the story grow before your eyes. I hope that if you ever get to come to Michigan, that you will look for Petoskey stones. And if you find them, that maybe you'll send me a photograph and I could feature it on a future channel story. That would be so fun and so wonderful. And I would love to know what stories you like to read at home and what stories you might like to know more about. If you have a favorite book that you would like grandma to feature on a future story time video, by all means, send me an email or write me a letter from the information in the notes below this video. And I will be more than happy to try and find your book and read it on a future story time. So, we're at the end of another story, and I hope that no matter where you are in the world, whether you're getting up in the morning, going to bed at night, in the middle of your day, I want you to know that Grandma loves you and I think about you and I care about you. So I'm sending you warm hugs and butterfly kisses. Until next time, this is Grandma D saying we'll see you at the next story time. You have a wonderful night tonight and a better day tomorrow. Bye-bye for now.